You know Five Nights at Freddy's is over seven years old? Yeah, this game's been around for nearly a decade now, and I've been following all this junk since day one. You know, back when we got four new FNAF games in the span of like a year? Those were wild days, man. Bleh. So fast forward to today, the fact that I can say that there's a brand new long awaited FNAF game out is pretty weird. That's right, after two years and many, many delays, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach is finally out. I've been pretty hyped for this game for a while, man. All the trailers have made it look like a real evolution of the series. It can actually move in this one. So I could not wait for Security Breach. And I really wanted to make some videos on my experiences playing the game, kind of like my Animal Crossing series. So I'm gonna do that. These are Fofi's adventures in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Part one. Yeah, I wanted to get this video out before the end of the year, so I haven't actually got that far in the game yet. But yeah, let's play FNAF. So this game takes place in Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, an unreasonably huge mall slash arcade slash concert venue slash pizzeria slash place for a game to happen where the main crew of animatronics are about to put on their big nightly concert. You got Montgomery Gator, Roxanne Wolf, Glamrock Chica, and of course, Freddy Fazbear, AKA Glam. Damn rock Freddy. As someone who's been a fan of 80s rock and hair metal for his entire life, this whole thing, I, I just love it. <laughs> but right at the start of their performance, Freddy mysteriously malfunctions, collapses on stage, and shuts down. He wakes up in safe mode back in his dressing room to find me. Yep. Our player character, a kid named Gregory, somehow stowed himself away inside of Freddy's chest cavity, managed to not be mulched by his mechanical innards, and is now trapped inside the pizza plex at night. Freddy, who is surprisingly sentient, decides not to immediately gouge out my skeleton like in the other games, but instead decides to help me find my way out of here. He even gives me a cool little watch. This thing can read messages, display my mission objective, navigate a map of the entire pizza plex, and check every security camera in the building. It can basically do anything I need, except tell the time. But anyway, I'm a tiny boy who needs to go home. And Freddy's like, dude, why don't you just ask the nighttime security guard Vanessa for help? But Gregory, er, I say I don't trust her. And Freddy's like, all right, but I can't leave this room on my own. If you want my help, you'll need to bust me out of here. And he points me in the direction of a nearby air vent. Of course. It's always air vents in these games. As I crawl my way through, I get glimpses at the other three animatronics. Roxanne's talking to herself in the mirror. Montgomery Gator is... Yeah, and Chica is absolutely shredding. I hop out the other end of the vent to find a big, open, explorable area that is just chock full of callbacks to old FNAF games. So obviously I start looking around for Easter eggs, but Freddy's like, Hey, you know I can't really help you if you're staring at a stupid cupcake. So I let him out of his dressing room, hide inside his gross chest, and we're off to find the exit. Freddy and I trudge through the dark tunnels under the pizza plex, passing by these creepy security bots, and nearly getting caught by Vanessa before Freddy's like, Oh man, I'm pooped. What's it been, two, three minutes? I'm tapping out. Yeah, so because Freddy malfunctioned, he's been rebooted in a lower power mode. So he can only help me along for a limited amount of time before he has to recharge in one of these big pods. So for now, I'm on my own. And as luck would have it, Chica is in the very next room stalking around and eating garbage. Not really sure how she got there when she was locked in her dressing room three minutes ago, but eh. Gotta have a stealth tutorial somehow. You know, I'm here, Chica's there, I gotta be past there. Simple enough. So my first try was questionable, but I did manage to get by on a second attempt, only to be immediately bombarded by the gator. And the game crashed. Take two. I sprint past Chica and Montgomery successfully this time, and I wind up in a security office. The doors shut around me and I'm trapped, a gator pounding on one door and a chicken patrolling the other one. Naturally, I start checking the cameras to see when the coast is clear and Oh my god, stuck in a security office? Checking cameras? It really is a FNAF game! I almost forgot for a second. I managed to sneak my way through and, oh my god, look, there's the exit! Ah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So, here I am, stuck in a giant pizzeria at night, surrounded by animatronics that want to kill me, the only other person around being a sketchy security guard, and my only friend being a robot bear who runs on AAA batteries. Freddy calls me and is like, Ooh, yeah, you're gonna be stuck here till 6 a.m. now. Ugh. Great. Just great. And with that, the game opens up and we got a whole dang pizza plex to explore. 
Yeah, kinda. Like, there are doors all over the place locked behind different security levels, so I don't have access to everything yet. I'm just in the lobby right now, and Freddy's telling me I gotta get access to the actual pizzeria. But after sneaking around, avoiding death by robot chicken, finding a Mr. Hippo magnet in the gift shop, and using it to jam a customer service machine, all I managed to get is a pass that lets me into the daycare. See, the sad part is, as weird as that sentence was, it's still pretty tame for FNAF. So I head over to the daycare and BOOP IT! <laughs> Oh, that's right, it's a FNAF game. Also, ah! Yeah, so apparently this daycare meant for tiny children is chaperoned by a terrifying jester animatronic with a son for a face. He's like, Oh boy, a friend! Let's spend every waking moment of every day together. Never leave me! And then the lights go out. Apparently, when the lights go out, this creepy but kinda well-meaning daycare attendant turns into an even creepier and definitely not well-meaning moon guy. Moon dude just disappears into the pitch black daycare and Freddy's on the phone like, What did you do? WHAT DID YOU DO?! Honestly, I'm not sure what I did. All I know is that now I'm stuck in a dark room with the murderous moon man! And the only way to get out is to turn the lights back on by activating five generators located Inside the play place? That can't be right. Let me see. <laughs> hey! Back off, dude! This is serious. Oh. Oh my god. They really put active generators inside the play place. And there's five of these? This is an egregious health and safety violation. Sir, you better get this place in shape or you'll be hearing from my superior. But for now, I'm deeming this place unfit for play, and I'm gonna have to shut you down. Good day, sir. Alright, now what? Oh! This isn't ideal. Quickly, into my gross chest. Freddy swoops in to save me from a room of animatronics and we dip. My guy's been out for a while, so he takes a quick stop to recharge as we leave the daycare. With me, he's still all cramped up inside his chest cavity. But outside the recharging station, I see this hazy vision of someone in a bunny suit just skipping by. I asked Freddy who that was and he's just like, What? I didn't see nothing. Besides, there are no bunnies at the pizza plex. Not anymore. Please accept this ominous statement at face value and do not read any more into it. Okay, since Freddy won't answer me, that was Vanny, the main villain of Security Breach. I assume. I don't know, I just started the game. But the theories leading up to this game all point to Vanny being a brainwashed servant of William Afton. You know, the purple guy who built all the original animatronics, killed all those kids, died like five different times, and whose consciousness infested a VR game and brainwashed all the playtesters into doing his bidding? Yeah, that guy. The popular theory has been that Vanny is that security guard, Vanessa, under Afton's control. But the game doesn't really expect us to know all that yet, so Freddy and I just head back to the lobby. In between dishing out health and safety inspections at the daycare, I managed to grab an upgraded security pass to gain access to... The Pizzeria! Take a map. Take a map. Take a map. Take a map. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, anyway, as I was saying, THE PIZZERIA! This place is gigantic! Three floors full of attractions, arcades, restaurants, and the giant main stage where this all started. It, pretty much all of it's off limits right now, except for a taco place called El Chips. Freddy's like, We can cut through here. And of course by we, I mean you. Yeah, I can't go in, so you know. Later. State-of-the-art, high-tech, sentient animatronic. Can't go into a taco place. Great. So, a quick cut through El Chips brings me into this huge arcade being patrolled by Roxanne Wolf and a ton of security bots. Freddy calls in to let me know that there's another security office just outside this arcade that I should try and make my way towards. First door, locked. Second door, also locked. Leaving only one option, an air vent. Every time, man. I mean, at least none of the animatronics can follow me in here. What is that? What is that? Nope, nope, no, 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 okay, no, no. Whew. Okay. I'm safe? I think I'm safe. Good thing Music Man can only crawl through vents and not out of them. As expected, on the other side of the vent is the security room. I step inside, grab a new security upgrade, and suddenly an alarm starts blaring! The office goes on lockdown, and Roxanne and Montgomery barge in! Freddy tells me he can shut down the alarm, but it'll take a while. So I gotta survive the next two and a half minutes with the doors wide open and two animatronics around each corner. Naturally, I panic! I bolt out of the room going, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Which, uh... <laughs> It didn't work out well. So I try again, and I do the exact same thing. Cool. Yeah, this part of the game was really getting to me. Some about the doors being wide open just made me so anxious I couldn't keep my head on straight. Until I realized I could just crouch in the corner here and do nothing, and everything was fine. 
That is such good gameplay. Well, the alarm shuts off, Roxanne and Montgomery just kind of leave, and I am free to keep mindlessly pushing forward with no clue where I'm trying to go. I head for this huge elevator, hop inside, and I'm just about to get away when... Yep. Despite not seeing her at all for the vast majority of this game, Vanessa was somehow right on my tail and managed to catch me. Next thing I know, I've been chucked inside the lost and found room, and I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. Wait. Uh... Why is everything getting all hazy again? Oh, uh, hello, Vanny. How you doing? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. You just come on in and make yourself at home, man. I just... <laughs> yeah, okay. Kind of saw that one coming. Let's rewind a bit and actually try to, you know, do something this time. Take two, found a screwdriver, escaped through an air vent, and just bolted away as far as I could. While I was running, I was able to get back in contact with Freddy, and he tells me to head for Roxy's Raceway, where I find him on the ground in pretty rough shape. The poor guy was so worried that he let his battery run out looking for me. So I'm stuck in a giant haunted pizza plex, a killer bunny mascot is chasing me, and my new best friend needs my help. What will happen next? Well, considering how long it took me to make this video, a lot of you probably already know, but I don't, and I'm running out of time here. But don't you worry, I'll be back before long with the rest of Security Breach. I just gotta, you know, finish the game first. Please be cool and don't spoil anything for me. And until next time, take a map. Take a map. Take a map. Take a map. Take a- So has FNAF taken over anyone else's life lately? Like, I haven't stopped thinking about this crap for months. And clearly it's not just me. I can't take two steps online without bumping into something FNAF related on YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, anything. The words Freddy Fazbear have been laser etched in my brain at this point. And all this because of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, the newest game in the series that I mean, it's not bad, but it definitely isn't finished. Oh no, oh no, we've got, he got too much juice. I honestly really like the game so far, even if it clearly needed a few more months in the oven. And since this is basically a fancy Let's Play channel at this point, I say it's time I hop back into Security Breach and see what other ways I can embarrass myself. But first, of course, I gotta say, if you like these FNAF videos and wanna see more, be sure to hit the big red subscribe button right below this video and ring the little gray bell next to it. That'll make sure you get notified every single time I upload so you'll never miss a future video, whether it's about FNAF or whatever else I talk about here. Also, if you want to support my channel even further, we do have merch available at the link in the description or on this little banner right below this video. All that goes back into supporting the channel and helping me get more of these videos out for you to enjoy. So with all that said, in part one of Security Breach, I got trapped in a giant pizza place at night, became friends with Freddy Fazbear in real life, evaded creepy robots and a sketchy security guard, shut down a daycare for health and safety violations, was chased by a killer bunny, didn't realize I could close the door during the security office section and just crouched in the corner while the game glitched out, and died. <laughs> a lot. And when we last left off, Freddy had let his battery run out while looking for me and asked for my help getting down to parts and service. He's kind of down for the count right now. So off I went through another set of rooms, crawling with security bots, avoiding Roxanne Wolf during her patrol. <laughs> most of the time. And eventually I find myself back in Rockstar Row, the big room full of Easter eggs where the whole game started, which means I just went in a complete circle. Cool. But now I have an upgraded security badge, which lets me access the nearby stage control room. Once inside, Freddy appears on the monitors and is like, hello, please ignore that I am now suspiciously able to stand, move, operate security cameras, and know exactly where you are. I can make my way to your location. You just have to open the doors for me. So it's like classic FNAF. I gotta spot Freddy on the security cameras and open doors for him to go through, all while keeping Monty, Chica, and Roxanne at bay by causing the doors to electrocute them. Hey, Freddy? Yes, Superstar? Why are these doors built to administer electric shocks? Uh, uh, hey, I'm here. Just hop down this vent and stop asking questions. So I meet back up with Freddy and he leads me to the main stage. Apparently this thing is also a massive elevator because Fazbear Entertainment has more money than God. We head down and finally reach parts and service it, just for Freddy to collapse and get dragged away by that creepy moon guy. Ah, uh, yeah, he's still a thing. I can't access parts and service on my own. So once again, I'm off to upgrade my security pass. Get used to this, by the way. It happens a lot. So I head through the only door the game will let me go through and I find... Oh. Hello, sir. You appear to be naked. I'm just gonna look away now and... <laughs> ah! Yes! I understand now! So these are animatronic endoskeletons. Robots just like Freddy and friends, but 
you know, nude. They only move when you're not looking at them. Kind of like the weeping angels from Doctor Who if you're a freaking nerd. Look away for even a few seconds and it's game over. And these utility tunnels are absolutely crawling with them. Not gonna lie, this part really freaked me out at first and I got jump scared a lot. But it's okay, because I got jump scared and sent back to the same save state so many times that my fear quickly melted away into pure stress and dread and not the kind the game wanted me to feel. See, this section sends you down a ton of hallways, each one ending with a door you gotta press a button to open, all leading to a security office that then loops back around to the start of the tunnels. The problem is that there's like a hundred of those stupid endoskeletons on the way. I'm not even joking. They're in every tunnel, they're in the security office. Yep, look at this. This is the number of red light, green light animatronics the game expects you to deal with, with no extra save spots. So every time I fail, it's right back to the beginning. And I think the developers expected me to be running away from these things. But screw that, man. I walked backwards the whole time. I wasn't taking my eye off those hunks of junk for a second. And then, when I finally get through all this and loop back around to the save spot, it's so close to the automatic door that trying to save just opens it back up. So this army of robots can just pour into what's supposed to be a kinda safe area. This took forever, dude. Like I was stuck on this part for an hour. Not gonna lie, I was feeling pretty salty after all this, but I got my security pass. I can get into parts and service now. I head back and I find Freddy at the dentist. He's stuck inside this big tube while Vanessa stands there being a Freaking loser. And she's like, if I find out you've been helping that stupid kid, I'm gonna rip off your skin, slap it on a new body, and leave your old one to rust. No, seriously, that's basically what she says. Vanessa seems to have a lot of power for a security guard. So after threatening his life, Vanessa just strolls off and leaves Freddy mid repairs, meaning it's up to me to get Freddy back in working order. Now this is some more classic Five Nights at Freddy stuff. These parts and service mini games are basically Simon Says Don't Die edition. Press the buttons in the right order, one wrong move and Freddy attacks. So I better focus here. I don't wanna get anything wrong. Okay, that was close. All right, Freddy's back on his feet, I'm back in his chest, and we're off to kill Chica. Okay, maybe I should explain. After having his head reattached, Freddy gives me a party pass, a ticket that'll let me into one of the various attractions at the Pizzaplex. Roxy Raceway is closed for repairs, so that leaves me with either Monty Golf or Phaser Blast. At the same time, I come across a bunch of blueprints for animatronic upgrades meant for each of the different mascots. Things like Monty's claws, Chica's voice box, Roxy's eyes, different stuff that makes these guys so much of a threat. But you know, if we could give these upgrades to Freddy instead, that would definitely come in handy. So the goal is now to decommission the animatronics, steal their upgrades, and help Freddy Boy here achieve his final form. Freddy's like, uh, please do not kill my friends. But I didn't notice because I was too busy planning to kill his friends. Anyway, yeah. I gotta choose between mini golf and laser tag, which basically boils down to which animatronic I wanna decommission first, Monty or Chica. And I'm not sure why, but something tells me that Monty Golf is for nerds. Anyone that picks Monty Golf is just a nerd. So I decided to check out Phaser Blast. It's laser tag with robots. And maybe death, but you know. So this is Phaser Blast. The goal is to capture flags across the course while fending off security bots and avoiding Chica. My only line of defense being a little laser gun that can temporarily stun the animatronics. All right, I captured a flag. Let's try this thing out. I don't, I don't feel guilty about this. So having conquered Phaser Blast, I return the blaster, head to the winner's circle and claim my prize, another blaster. Well, this works exactly the same as the one I threw away 30 seconds ago, but now I can stun animatronics anytime I want. That's gonna be super useful. Better head back to Freddy now and, or wait, there's an open vent in here. Vents in this game usually aren't just open. Where's this thing go? Well, against my better judgment, I crawl through the ominous vent and find a little hidden room. Oh gosh, I wonder who could possibly be living in here. Gotta be honest, knowing that Vanny's just crashing in a side room with a little bed and playing video games, it makes her a lot less threatening. Anyway, on my way out, I grab another security upgrade and a ticket to Bonnie Bowl. It's kinda random, but I guess I'll go check that place out. Maybe I'll find something to help me kill Chica in there. Well, 
not really. While exploring the back rooms of the bowling alley, I found this stash of green junk called Monty Mystery Mix. Not really a fan of that name, or the fact that it's apparently pizza flavored. It, gross. Not sure who would ever want this, but eh, it's in my inventory now, so I guess I'm stuck with it. Doesn't look like there's much left to do at Bonnie Bowl, so I just head out and start exploring more. Eventually, I wind up in the back rooms of the kitchen and stumble across, what else? Another security office. I grab my security upgrade, the room goes on lockdown again, and Freddy's like, Chica is on her way. You have to use the console to distract her. But you're in the room with me. Can I just hide in your- Chica loves pizza. Use the Pizzaplex virtual ordering system to whip up a hot pie and get her off your trail. Dude, I guarantee it'll be easier if you just let me- Play the fun pizza minigame. All right, fine. Jeez. So yeah, I guess the game didn't expect me to bring Freddy in here. So now I'm controlling a security bot and making pizza. Grab the dough, squirt the sauce, shred the cheese, slap the meat, slap the not meat, pop it in the oven, and there. We got a pizza, and Chica's distracted. You happy now, Freddy? With Chica preoccupied, I start to explore more of the kitchen and find, of all things, a trash compactor. Hmm. Wait a second. Chica eats trash. I need to kill Chica. Chica also loves pizza and I have some pizza-flavored sludge in my pocket. Ooh, I see where this is going. Freddy, open up that chest cavity. We got a your friend to kill. In the next room is a generator that powers the trash compactor, and, oh, uh, two chicas. I don't think there's supposed to be two chicas, and I'm not sure why there's two chicas. Well, talk about killing two birds with one stone. I flip on the generator, run to the other room, and set the Monty Mystery Mix inside the trash compactor. Chica gets a whiff of the pizza-flavored sludge, beelines for the trash compactor, and... Nice. Whoa! Yeah, so as Chica was falling down the garbage chute, she decided to drag me down with her deep underneath the pizza plex. A bit of a setback, but I was able to snag Chica's voice box for one of Freddy's upgrades. Plus, with Chica out of commission, I should have a much easier time getting around, and she's gone. I guess decommission doesn't mean what I thought it meant. Yeah, I'll spare you the details, but basically, I had to sneak my way through the bowels of the pizza plex, passing by tons of garbage and discarded animatronics, and avoiding Chica, who somehow survived being crushed to death. I successfully make my way out the other side, and... Oh. Oh, dear. So? This is a room covered in sticky notes. That's pretty neat. And there's a family of security bots here, too. Wait a minute. That... That's Circus Baby. Circus Baby, a mom, a dad, and two brothers, one missing their head. This is the Afton family. You know, like from Five Nights at Freddy's. Huh. I wonder why that's here. Eh, whatever. Time to keep moving. I meet back up with Freddy, head down to parts and service, upgrade him with Chica's voice box. <laughs> Poorly. Try again, and boom! Freddy can now stun animatronics by yelling at him. And I mean, yeah, it's kinda cool, but the upgrade distorted his voice and he sounds scary now, I don't like it. Freddy's like, uh, This is Chica's upgrade. How did you get this? Well, I certainly didn't attempt to murder her in cold blood. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Let's get going. Uh... What an idiot. Well, with that, I think I'm about out of time here. But stay tuned, because in the next episode, we're going to see where all this junk is heading as we reach the end of Security Breach. I got a lot of animatronics to kill. You say something? Yeah, nothing! So, I guess this is just what I do now. Might as well start these videos going, Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier, and welcome back to Five Nights at Freddy's. Yep, we're back. We are very near the end of Security Breach. I can just feel it. And just in time for everyone else on YouTube to have already finished the game, yeah, four months ago. Yeah. Ah well, let's play FNAF. So last time in Security Breach, I helped Freddy get to parts and service for repairs, spent an hour trying to get past these stupid endoskeleton bots, called the security guard Vanessa a loser, played laser tag, and mercilessly killed one of Freddy's friends, Chica, so that I could stuff her voice box down Freddy's throat. Yeah. Yeah, I called that video showing no mercy in Security Breach for a reason. <laughs> but it's only about to get more intense, because the goal of the game is still to hunt down and decommission the rest of the animatronics. And with Chica's face thoroughly smashed in, that just leaves Roxanne Wolf and Montgomery Gator. I don't have the party pass to access Monty Golf, but I do have the security access to get into Roxy Raceway while it's closed for repairs. I guess Monty will just have to wait. So I hop up into Freddy's chest, head over to the raceway, and... Wow, under repairs is right. This place is a mess. And after looking around for a while, I couldn't actually find much to do here. But then I find this go-kart off to the side and Freddy's like, I'm sorry, but you're not tall enough to ride this go-kart alone. You'll need a working driver assist bot. Oh, 
Oh, is that what I'm supposed to be doing? Did, okay. Apparently I have to ride this go-kart, but unfortunately I am a teeny tiny little crumb of a man. So I can't ride it without a chaperone and this one's uh, a bit broken. It's missing its head and you kind of need those to drive, even if you're a robot. So I scoured the raceway for a while and ah! <sighs> I cannot believe that got me. I really should be better than that by now. So yeah, this box jump scared ahead onto the floor, but Freddy's like, Uh-oh, this head don't work. We should head over to the West Arcade to fix it up. Yeah, all right, kind of random. So even though we just got here, Freddy and I leave the raceway and hop over to the entrance to the West Arcade, only for Freddy to eject me from his chest and send me off on my own. He's like, I'm sorry, I can't come with you this time. There's this DJ in the arcade. Great guy, you'll love him. And if I step foot on his dance floor, I just can't help but move. Dude, you can just say there's a boss fight in here. It's fine. One elevator trip later and... Okay, come on. How big is this pizza plex supposed to be? Like, I was just on the third floor of the already massive pizza plex, took an elevator up and wound up here in an arcade the size of a freaking gothic church that also has three floors. I swear to God, the pizza plex must be visible from space. It's huge. Someone who understands how to numbers more than me needs to try and figure out how big this place actually is. So yeah, Room's big, but beyond that, I got three paths in front of me. Dead Ahead just has some security bots, looks like Monty's patrolling to the left, and over to the right is... Hmm, I take it that's the DJ, and I take it I'm gonna have to deal with them eventually, so I'm just gonna treasure the time before that happens. Eventually, I find this maintenance area with the, uh, robot head repair machine, I guess? And like clockwork, the entire arcade loses power and everything goes on lockdown. You get one in every episode. So in order to get the power going again, I have to run around the arcade and flip three breaker switches. But hey, I already spotted one here in the back room and one in a bathroom on the first floor, so this should be pretty easy. But of course, I have to start with the switch right next to the comically large Music Man animatronic. I think we know what's about to happen here. Flip the switch and yeah, He's gone. So with Music Man loose, I sprint through the arcade to try and get to the next breaker switch. First up's the one I found in the bathroom. Flip it on, quick and easy, and... So that's where Music Man went. Oh my god! This is legitimately the most terrifying thing the game has thrown at me so far. It Jesus. So with the danger of the situation clearly established, I run very much away from the Music Man robot and quickly hide in a nearby... Yeah, this thing. Okay, I think the coast is clear. I can hop out now. Hmm. I said I can hop out now. Hop out now? Oh god. Oh no. I'm caught in a loop! Okay, yeah, I'll say it. This is very funny. What's less funny was after about five minutes of spinning around, glitching in and out of the same hiding spot, I was forced to quit the game and reload. That's always what you want in a game with no autosave. So, take two, lights go out, flip the switch by Mr. Worldwide, flush the toilet in the bathroom, poop pants, bolt all the way back to the switch I saw in the back room, and... What? Why, why, why can't I flip the switch? Am I doing something wrong? Is this, is this another bug? Yeah, uh, okay, I guess I'll just go look for another switch and... <sighs> this kind of cycle continued for a good hour before I finally found the right switches and saw Monty doing... <whistles> that. And finally, the game is like, okay, now you gotta flip the switch in the back room. Oh! Okay, so I was supposed to go here, just not until the game told me to. Alright, yeah, sure. Cool. I switched the last breaker on only for the giant music man to emerge from the very obvious hole in the wall in front of me. But at this point, I'm pretty checked out. I'd been trying to get past this part for an hour. I was way more afraid of having to do all this again than I was of any of the stuff I was actually supposed to be scared of. So one final chase sequence goes down, I get back to the maintenance room and everything just goes back to normal. Hooray! Now I can... Wait, what was I doing? No, for real, I kind of forgot what all this was for. Oh, right, I spent an hour searching for breakers, dealing with glitches, and watching a gator fly so that I can get the power back on in the West Arcade and fix up this robot head so that I can take that back to the raceway and fix up the go-kart, allowing me to ride it, even though the game hasn't really told me why I want to ride it in the first place, all of which is supposed to somehow kill Roxanne Wolf. So after all of this, all of this. I place the repaired head on the driver bot and the game immediately jumps to a cutscene of me just 
already on the racetrack. This obviously gets Roxy's attention, she jumps down onto the track, and... <laughs> Okay, I just tuck and rolled out of a moving vehicle and let that go-kart absolutely wreck Roxanne Wolf. The cart slams directly into her face. We even get to see it in super slow-mo. That, oh, that's brutal, man. And then I decide to kick Roxy while she's down by gouging out her eyes. I know I like to joke that I'm on a merciless robot-killing rampage in this game, but this is actually way wilder than I was expecting. So, just like last time with Chica, in all this chaos, I've now fallen down into the bowels of the pizza plex and have to work my way back up. All while running away from Roxy, because this game still doesn't know what decommission means. Roxy can't see, you know, because of the gouging, but she can still hear me and will lunge at me super quick. And honestly, this might be the best part of the game so far when it comes to horror. Like, there are parts of the game that have been kind of startling or spooky, but to me, horror is a very specific feeling of being like, shaken up, you know, kind of disturbed. And as I'm trapped under the pizza plex, as a broken Roxanne wolf viciously attacks me, while crying? Like sobbing uncontrollably and talking about how she's not good enough? Uh, yeah. This part was kind of freaky, but the effect was kind of ruined once I got into this furnace room and suddenly just couldn't walk right. Like, I just kept stopping for no reason. So I looked it up and, uh, this is supposed to be a maze. Like, there's supposed to be walls of fire here, but they're just aren't. I don't know if it's a glitch or my graphic settings or what, but it definitely led to a couple of... <laughs> Yeah. But eventually I got through it, escaped back to the raceway, and reunited with Freddy. Same as last time, Freddy and I hop down to parts and service so I can shove Roxy's eyes into Freddy's head. And Freddy's like, All right, just gonna try and not think about where you got these eyes. Look, it's 6am. You can go home now. Let's head to the exit. Wait, wait we're done? Yeah. I've, I've legit just stumbled onto the end of the game, completely out of nowhere. So with no time to waste, Freddy and I beeline for the main exit, and it looks like I'm actually gonna make it out. But in one last heart to heart with Freddy, this line gets dropped. If I leave now, nothing will change. There will be more disappearances. What? Disappearances? What disappearances? No one has mentioned there being any disappearances. Did they? Legit, I think they forgot to set this plot point up. Like. At all. And where's Vanny been? She's barely showed up at all since the beginning of the game. Wasn't she the main villain? What about Gator Golf? This can't be the end of the game, right? Well, here's where things get interesting. Because during this last talk with Freddy, he gives me a choice. I can leave, I can stay and keep exploring the pizza plex, or I can go after Vanny. Which I should point out, up to this point, Freddy hasn't even seen Vanny. What is happening here? Well, obviously I choose to go after Vanny, to which Freddy says, Let's end this. And what? She's barely done anything this whole game. <sighs> Never mind. Suddenly, we jump all the way back to Phaser Blast, where Freddy and I confront Vanny. She sicks a bunch of those security bots on Freddy, who actually take him down really easily. Like, wow, Freddy was useless here. But while the security bots were dismantling Freddy, I snuck my way back to that hidden Vanny hideout room, found the remote she used to control the security bots, and used that to turn the bots on Vanny. And based on how, uh enthusiastic the bots were about dismantling Freddy, I can only imagine that Vanny... Ah, she'll be fine. I mean, just look at Freddy. He's... Uh-oh. Yeah, so Vanny dies, then Freddy dies, then the credits roll. And now that I think about it, they never even say that I actually left the pizza plex. They just throw up a newspaper article after the credits saying that the place got shut down and then it's back to the title screen. So as far as I know, the pizza plex is closed and I'm still in it. Five Nights at Freddy's security breach, everybody. No way, that, that can't be the real ending. Well, turns out, yeah, I'm right. That was just one of six total endings. Six. I unlocked this particular ending by finding Vanny's hideout in the last episode, but there are five more endings that all have certain requirements to unlock, including one that is supposed to be the true canon ending to the game. And I thought, okay, all I have to do is reload that final scene, choose to stay in the pizza plex, and do everything I need to do to unlock the true ending, right? Well, for some reason, the game decides in what is essentially the post game to deactivate all the save spots so that if you die, you go right back to the main entrance with any new progress lost. Which of all the things this game has thrown at me, 
this is the most baffling thing I've seen. I legitimately can't think of any way that this is a good idea. And I tried, I seriously tried to go through the entirety of the Monty Golf path like this, but I died right at the start of the boss and lost hours of progress. So I said, ah, no, screw it. I have no clue what they were thinking when they made this choice, but I was not gonna deal with it. Luckily, it looks like the developers are patching this out, so... I guess join me next time in the final, final episode of Security Breach as I not only unlock the true ending, but every ending in the game. Lord help me. Okay. I promise this is the last one. Over the last few months, I have been slowly working my way through Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. We've made a lot of progress, seen a lot of jump scares, and mercilessly killed several sentient animatronics. No mercy. But today, we end it. Like, properly. Last time in Security Breach, I reached the end of the game and was mostly confused? Well, turns out that's because I had only got one of six total endings. Right when I thought I was done, I realized, oh crap. I'm gonna have to get all the endings, aren't I? Yeah, I knew I wouldn't feel right ending this series without tying up all the loose ends. So, until they release some kind of DLC, it's time for one last video with our favorite cast of 80s themed killer animatronics. So let's get started with ending number one. The one where you just leave. This one's simple. At the end of the game, when Freddy and I reach the main entrance, the game gives me the choice to leave, stay, or go after Vanny. I pick leave, and a cutscene starts. We see the player character, Gregory, running away from the Pizzaplex and eventually camping out in a cardboard box in an alley. Which, I guess, is implying that Gregory doesn't really have a family or a home. Oh, and look! Gregory's got a newspaper with an article about the disappearances. You know, the disappearances that were never directly mentioned until the very end of the game, even though they're supposed to be a very important plot point. Yeah. Those, nice to see them finally showing up. Good for them. But things aren't looking that good for Gregory because as he's sleeping in the alleyway, we see the silhouette of Vanny appear before things fade to black. So yeah, the kid dies, I guess. And that's the end. Needless to say, I think this might be the bad ending. So let's lighten things up a bit with ending number two, the one with the getaway van. This one's a bit more fun. Again, we start at 6 a.m. at the Pizzaplex entrance, but this time I decide to stay and explore the place a little more. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna leave. Just not here. Not the main entrance. No. Yeah, this random door near the loading docks? That's the exit for me. I get to the door and I'm given the same options as last time. Leave, stay, Vanny. I say, why yes, I am more satisfied with this door than the previous one, and choose to leave. Gregory then hijacks a van and busts out of the pizza plex. Yes, Gregory, a child the size of an office garbage can, is driving. But, oh no, Freddy's battery is dying. Didn't think about that part, did you? But don't worry. Not only does Gregory know how to drive a stick shift, but he can also jumpstart Freddy's battery using the van's jumper cables. Apparently all of Freddy's power is in his ears. I don't know. So the two make it out of the pizza plex, realize they forgot to do anything about Vanny or all the missing people, and are just like, eh, sucks to suck, and speed off. This is considered a good ending, but I would argue that this is the best ending of anything ever. Next, ending number three, the one we already got. Yeah, this is the ending I got last episode, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. Legit, all I had to do to unlock this ending was to explore the Phaser Blast arena a little bit and find this side room that Vanny had been using as a hideout. I didn't really do anything, I just kind of looked at it. But doing that unlocks the Vanny option when you get to the main entrance. And picking that plays a cutscene where Vanny sicks a bunch of security bots on Freddy, who gets absolutely ripped to shreds. But then Gregory's just like, Nah. And makes the bots turn on Vanny. We don't really see what happens, but I'm sure she escapes safely and doesn't get her internal organs violently ripped out. So yeah, Freddy dies, Vanny dies, the game never actually confirms that Gregory left the pizza plex, and the place is shut down for a bit. That's all, folks. It's a slightly more fulfilling bad ending, but it's still definitely a bad ending. Explains why I felt so confused last episode. So let's kick things up a notch with ending number four, the one with the arson. All right, so things are starting to get a bit more involved because now we're getting to the endings that require some like completionist junk to unlock. No more just walking up to doors. Now we gotta walk up to doors with prerequisites. And honestly, I'm not 100% sure what the requirement is for this one. When I looked it up, the consensus was just collect the six gold plushies. So I did that. Most of them you can just find sitting around the pizza plex, but two of them took a little extra work. Uh -oh. oh, you need Monty's claw upgrade to get one of them? We'll get to that, trust me. And another one gets unlocked after you take pictures of these cardboard cutouts using a special camera you found in Monty Golf. All right, I took all the pictures, found the secret room, and grab the last gold plushie. Let's uh, let's call Freddy and get out of here. Uh, what 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 is happening? <laughs> oh, my. oh no! 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no. This this is legitimately the worst I've ever seen the game bug out. I kind of don't want to leave. This is fun. This is fun. <laughs> yeah, so after I got Freddy to stop shifting through dimensions, I grabbed my gold plushies, dashed to this fire escape, and tried to instigate the ending, but nothing happened. Like, absolutely nothing. An emergency Google search led to the realization that even though I had the gold plushies, I needed to have just collected more junk in general. So I ran around, opened some boxes, tried again, and sure enough, it worked. Did I actually need the gold plushies? I have no idea. Either way, we're leaving. But Freddy hangs back and decides to dabble in a little bit of, you know, arson. Seriously, he flicks on a lighter built into his finger, how'd that one get past health and safety, and sets the pizza plex ablaze. Our heroes then escape to the roof only to find Vanny. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Freddy straight up tackles Vanny, knocking them both right off the roof. Gregory then runs down, unmasks Vanny, and discovers that she is, in fact, Vanessa. Not sure why he's so confused by that. I thought he knew. W wasn't that kind of the point? But actually, Gregory might be onto something. Because immediately after that, we cut back to the roof of the Pizzaplex, which is still very much on fire, by the way, where we see the actual Vanessa, security guard outfit and everything, trapped on the roof. Yeah, that really throws a wrench into this whole thing. So are Vanny and Vanessa the same person? How is she two places at once? Is this Vanessa? Does any of this mean anything? Ugh, let me tell you, it's a good thing it's not my job to decipher what any of this means. But that's the ending, and speaking of Vanny, let's move on to ending number five, the one that's the good one. This is actually kind of a weird one. To unlock this ending, the main thing I gotta do is find and beat three Princess Quest arcade games spread throughout the Pizzaplex. These are weird, cryptic mini games that play like the old top-down Zeldas. Side note, is this like a thing? Like, this definitely isn't the first game I've seen with these very specific dungeon crawler mini games. I don't know, just a weird thing that I noticed. Anyway, the first thing I gotta do is actually find the games. Funnily enough, Princess Quest 1 actually took the most time to find. After exploring for a while and checking a walkthrough, I finally found the arcade cabinet in the famous Glamrock Beauty Parlor. Yeah. That. An area of the game I'm convinced only exists to house this minigame. The second cabinet is in the back room of the West Arcade, and the final cabinet is inside Vanny's hideout room. Which means in order to play it, I had to instigate the Vanny ending, and instead of turning the bots on Vanny, I just sit around and play a video game while my best friend gets ripped to shreds. Now, in terms of the actual contents of these games, I'm no theorist here, but they appear to be some kind of exploration of Vanessa's mind. I mean, in game one, you see this princess character confront an evil glitching purple rabbit. That's pretty cut and dried. Seems like glitch trap to me. Oh, which reminds me, if you're not up to speed, Vanny is under the control of Glitch Trap, a digital manifestation of William Afton, aka the purple guy's evil consciousness. Yeah, I figured I should get that out there just in case. By Princess Quest 3, we wind up exploring an actual Freddy Fazbear location and find this giant locked door backstage. Yeah, kinda like the door you see Glitch Trap through in FNAF VR. One quick swipe opens it up, and bam, that's the end. We get a cutscene of all the security bots shutting down with Vanny's mask laying on the floor. Gregory salvages Freddy's severed head from his mangled remains, and they both meet Vanessa outside the Pizzaplex, now free of the control Glitch Trap had over her. They then escape and relax on this hillside eating ice cream, which is nice, confusing, but nice. And that's the good ending, but it's not. Ending number six, the real one, the true canon ending of Security Breach. Yeah, I think. And it's actually one of the simpler ones to get, in theory. All you gotta do is beat all three animatronics, Roxy, Monty, and Chica. Doing so will get you access to this random elevator underneath Roxy Raceway. But just getting to that point was not easy for me. Because once you get to the main entrance at 6am, the game's basically over. And anything you do afterwards is treated as the post-game. Which, for some reason, doesn't allow you to save. And guess who didn't know this, didn't do the Monty path ahead of time, and now has to do the whole thing with no save. Yeah, me. Er, well, kinda. A recent update did address the save issue. Now instead of no save states, we got one. Just the one sitting in the atrium. And it's actually not helpful here. See, to reach Monty's boss fight, you gotta solve one of the biggest puzzles in the game, Mazer Size. A big maze that you can rearrange in a million different ways. But only one path is gonna lead you to the conveniently open air vent that leads to the Monty fight. And this maze? will be the death of me. I was stuck on this thing for hours. And after finally figuring it out and looking up a walkthrough, I left to save the game so I'd never have to do it again. And the maze resets when you leave the room. Steel Wool, is everything okay?
Are you mad at me? Ugh, fine. Resolve the maze, crawl through the vent, smash Monty over the head with a giant bucket, steal his hands for profit, and boom. At long last, Freddy is now fully upgraded and can reach the elevator under the pizzeria. Which leads to the game's final area... Huh. Another pizzeria. Oh, dude, is this the FNAF 6 pizzeria? I think it is. So, not only is the Pizzaplex the size of a small country, but it's also built on top of a much older pizzeria that somehow got completely buried underground. That's kind of impressive, actually. Oh, wait, if this is the FNAF 6 place, then I bet if we go down here, we're gonna find... Yeah, that's a big old blob of burned up animatronics. That definitely checks out with this being the place from FNAF 6, since all the animatronics in that game got incinerated along with William Afton, or... Wait, if the animatronics are here, then that means... Oh boy. That's right, the final boss of Security Breach has emerged. And of course, it's the immortal purple bunny man himself, William Afton, aka Springtrap. Or Burnt Trap, as he's known in this game. But we've done it. We've reached the final fight. Burnt Trap's attempting to possess Freddy, and we gotta use these buttons around the room to set him on fire and stop him. Even though we know this guy's been burned to death before, a few times actually, and it's never really worked out that badly for him. But of course, we've also gotta avoid Roxy, Monty, Chica, and the Blobs. A very uncomfortable tentacles. Now I'm not gonna lie, I'm not sure how to beat this fight legitimately. Like, yeah, I know the basics, but in most of the Let's Plays I've seen, this is one of the most bugged out parts of the entire game. And it definitely didn't seem any different for me. I can handle Chica and Monty fine, just shut the doors and they'll leave you alone. But Freddy's like, the doors won't stop Roxy, hide. And since the room's basically empty, naturally I hop inside of Freddy's gross chest, which is a sentence I shouldn't be as desensitized to as I am. But every time I did, I was auto ejected as Freddy's battery would randomly jump from full to empty in five seconds and he'd run off to a charging station. I didn't, I didn't know I could get rejected by Freddy Fazbear. Plus, I think Roxy glitched out because she just never left. Just aimlessly running around the room non-stop, making it impossible to get around. I legit couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. But glitchy or not, if you do manage to get through the fight, the blob snatches up William Afton, giving Freddy and Gregory plenty of time to escape the now very much on fire pizzeria. I wonder how that happened. The two get out unscathed, relax on the same hill from the previous ending. I realize this is the first time Gregory has actually appeared fully rendered and animated on screen throughout the entire game. And that, finally, is the end of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Weird game.